Hello everyone and welcome back. In this episode, uh, we are going to add, um, well, mouse handling, basically. We are saving the mouse position relative to the canvas and we are, keep, we are going to keep track of the, or if we click the mouse buttons left on and the right one. And first, I need to say sorry to some things. Um, the first thing is, I think I forgot a semicolon here and there, or maybe there. I somewhere forgot a semicolon. I already fixed it and I forgot where it was. But uh, these are, um, it was like two semicolons somewhere here and I think it was here. <clears throat> okay. But it did work uh, without it, um, probably because of Chrome. Some browsers probably won't uh, like that. Um, yeah, if you're using a other browser, maybe you already came along my errors. <coughs> Sorry for that. Okay, to start now. Um, as I said, we want to keep track of the mouse position and um, keep track of the clicking the buttons. For this we need some variables. Um, the first one is, I'm calling it mouse pause for mouse position. You can of course um, write it down as mouse position, no problem, but um, you need to make sure that you write everywhere. Um, well, you need the variables right, because I let it, I call it every time pause for position. Then I need two other variables, um, mouse down left. I set that to false and a mouse down right also to false. And for this mouse position here, I already set it to an array. And the first element of that array is the X position and the second one is the Y position. Okay, now we might have a problem. Um, just um, it's not that easy to get the right relative mouse position. That means um, normally you get the mouse position inside the browser window. So let me show what I mean. Um, it's not just in here in our canvas, but all the window. No, and we want the position inside the canvas, relative to the canvas, where um, there's zero position or here, we need to define that later, or we just take what um, our function will give us, uh, where the zero starts here and increases to 1280 and so on. So we want it relative to this window. Yeah, and to do this we need to write a function for that and I'm gonna call it um, get mouse pause like this and I give it a canvas and the EVT, EVT means just event. Um, yeah, then we need to get um, the rectangle of the canvas or the bounding. Well, the method for this is called um, get bounding. Oops, bounding client rect. And with this, we can calculate now the relative position of the canvas or uh, um, our, from our mouse position inside the canvas. Okay, uh, we just return um, the object where the X position is from the event client.x, the X position minus the rectangle um, from the left. And the Y position is, well, almost the same, but with the Y components and the top. 
and the semicolon there and that's hopefully it um i think we can now print um that position just let me check if i have everything right yeah of course um no it doesn't work now um we need to actually add a event lesson a listener to the canvas so that our movement is triggering this function to calculate our relative position and that's also quite easy to do uh, we just need to call canvas at event listener for the mouse move and here we're going to add a function we're gonna also going to call it evt and here just say mouse uh, is get mouse position with the canvas object and the event and then our final mouse position is the mouse dot x and the mouse dot y position yeah and that's basically it cool um let's try uh, and see if that works i think i can just say here console log um mouse boss i hope it does work um just a second there we go don't forget to save and refresh well it seems it does work okay yeah i'm gonna minimize it a little bit there we go and at the bottom left we have zero and if i go to the right side we are going to see Okay, let me just remove the delta time because it's a bit annoying. Just I'm just going to comment that out. There we go. Okay, we see the left x position 1 to 0 now and then if you, if I go to the complete right it's 1 uh, 1280 um and yeah, 720 that's right. And that's also right. And if I go outside it just doesn't trigger the event and yeah that's right that works that's nice um cool now we need to do some other things now we can now we know where our, our mouse position is we need to add um if our mouse is actually pressed down and this is pretty easy too. It's like almost the exact same um, thing. We just need to add another event listener, but this time not to the canvas, uh, but to the window. So to our browser window, basically. And we just call again event listener at event listener for the key down event and add a function again with the event and oh sorry i don't i don't mean key down we need that later on i mean uh mouse down sorry for that and there we are going to add an if statement the event uh, if the event dot button is um zero and this is the mouse button on the left side then we're going to set it to true and if the event dot button is on the right side we are going to set the mouse down right to true that's for the mouse down and to set it to false it's quite easy to just copy it edit and gonna change mouse down to mouse up and these things to false 
and two false. Okay. That's basically it for that. Um, we can try again if it works. Um, I guess we can just call here a console.log. Um, mouse down left. I just um, check the mouse down left because I guess it's enough. If mouse down left is working, mouse down right should work too. Okay, save that. Go back to your browser um, and refresh. Now, when I press, um, you see true. When I, uh, I mean, I hold the button down, and when I let it go, it's going back to false. All right, awesome. That's the exact behavior we want. Cool. Um, and that's it for this episode. In the next one, um, we are going to add a simulation class to our project. Um, in this simulation class, um, well, this is going to be the main start point, basically, for our engine. Um, we just call in the main loop or in the update simulation, which is called here in an instance with update and draw. And that's basically it. After after the, the next episode, we will not change anything except adding scripts to that uh, to that HTML file. Um, yeah, then we will really start our engine. These are just preparations. Um, oh, sorry, you can't see anything. There we go. Um, these are just um, preparations for interaction with our simulation. So if you're doing that in C Sharp, for example, using frameworks um, or libraries, um, you might have a easier life for doing that because it's already in there. And you can just start with the simulation class and do these things. Um, yeah, our journey really begins with the simulation class in the next episode. Okay, so that's enough. <laughs> I read enough. Uh, I, I talked enough, sorry, <laughs> for this episode. Um, I hope you had, um, well, some fun. And yeah, see you in the next one.